Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, I will show you 10 new features of Power Apps. We will look at the modern command bar experience, named formulas, inline table designer experience, the app sharing dialog email customization feature, and a lot more. So let's check it out in action. The command bar experience now has a modern look and feel, but it is designed to improve your authoring experience. This experience can be enabled by turning on the modern command bar feature. We can insert controls. The insert tab in this command bar is very much now in lines with the insert tab option on the left hand navigation pane. We can add data and connect to our data sources directly from the command bar experience. We can create new screens, pick from existing layouts or screen templates, which are now known as scenarios, change the theme of our power app, set a background color for the screen. The modern command bar is contextual in nature. So as an example, if I was to add a label control, the properties that will show up in the command bar would be with respect to the label control. So depending upon the object that is selected, the command bar experience will contextually change the options. You can change the background image of your screen. This will showcase all the media that you have imported in your power app. You can upload media, get a preview of the existing media content that has been added and simply added as the background image for your screen. Settings are the general settings for your power app. And in the three ellipses, we have the option here for looking at collections, variables, and more. We can share our app, look at the app checker, save the app. And there are multiple options here. We can save with version notes, which is extremely handy in case you would like to look at the different versions of your app or restore a previous version. You can directly save and publish, download a copy of your app, or simply just go ahead and publish the version of your Power App. Creating and editing tables in Dataverse directly by leveraging the table designer experience under data. If we head over to add data, we now have a create new table action. On selection of this, I can enter a name for my table. Click create and this will create a table directly inside Dataverse for the current environment. The table designer experience opens up directly in line in the studio experience itself. I can add new columns on the fly. I can pick from a wide variety of data types. Create choice sets on the fly. You can see how it also lists out the choices that I defined right here in line. We can edit the table properties. Also enter data directly in line in the studio experience. Once you're done with designing your table, simply hit close. That table is saved and stored in Dataverse. Connect to that table. Insert a gallery, connect to the table that's connected in the Power App, and all the information in that table is available right here in the gallery experience. You can also edit tables that are connected in your Power App directly from this new table designer experience. Dataverse formula columns. These columns are based on PowerFX, which is the native language of Power Apps. Let's add a new column. The data type, we'll pick formula. The formula editor supports IntelliSense to suggest formulas and errors in real time. So for example, concatenate the name with full name. I'll click save. And here is my formula column in action. 
These calculations are done on the fly and the results are available in real time. Sharing a Power App now has a new feature for defining the email message that goes out and also gives the ability to include an image. I will share this with a user Sarah. I can define an email message which talks about what the app does. I can include an image. I can also share this with additional users. Once I click share, this will now go ahead and send out an email invitation to the new users to whom the app was shared with. And here is the email that Sarah has received. It includes the image and the message. And here's the link for Sarah to run the Power App. The Environment Picker now has an updated selection experience that categorizes the environments based on whether the environments contain Dataverse or environments without Dataverse. Plus, we can filter based on my role as the admin in those environments. So it will list out only those. Or environments where I am a shared app contributor. Filter by data platform, whether it contains Dataverse or no. And also filter by environment type. Show me all the development environments or show me all the production environments and so and so forth. Solutions by default. Solutions are used to transport apps, flows, tables and other components from one environment to another and are a key mechanism for implementing healthy application lifecycle management in the Power Platform. However, there are scenarios in which your users are creating their apps outside of solution context. With this new feature, it will save all the canvas apps that are created outside of the scope of a solution in a solution known as the Common Data Services Default Solution. This is an environment level feature that can be enabled. To do that, head over to the Admin Center. The environments will list out all the environments for which I am an admin of. I'll pick my default environment in this case. Head over to settings, go to features, and ensure that create new Canvas apps as Dataverse Solutions feature is turned on. I'll click save. In my default environment, I will create an app outside of solution context. Click create. The moment I do that, if you observe the URL, there is an attribute that's being passed. It's called solution ID. And this has the ID of that common data services default solution. I will go ahead and publish this Power App. Once the app is saved and published, if I look at the common data services default solution, and if I head over to apps, the test Power App that I created outside of solution context heads straight into the common data services default solution. We can now leverage named formulas instead of global variables and collections for faster app load time and logic that is easier to understand and maintain in Power Apps. Named formulas derives its name from the feature in Excel known as name manager. A table in Excel has a name associated with it. I can have any cell in Excel that I can give a specific name to. The advantage here is I can refer to this by name. And if I was to write any formulas there, it will recalculate instantly. Let's say if I use the average function to average information from this table, which I have given it a specific name, that is my user table. And from here, I will point to the feedback score column. As the data in this table changes, you will see this formula changing on the fly. It is recalculating. On my app on start, here I'm leveraging the set function to create my global variables. Now when Power Apps loads, it has to execute all of these formulas that I have defined on on start before it navigates the user to the start screen. 
Now, what if I can write the same formula, but in a different way? Let's take these three formulas and let's just remove it from here and make these named formulas by heading over to the app object and this time go to a new property known as formulas. This is where I will be defining my named formulas. So I can simply use user email is equal to user dot email. User manager is equal to get the users manager from the office 365 users connector. The HR manager email is as follows. And these are named formulas. These formulas don't say anything about when they should be calculated or how they should be calculated. They are truly declarative. The advantage of using named formulas is the formula's value is always available. There is no timing dependency. So when they are used, only then will they be made available. The formula's value is always up to date. If I add a label control in here and paste the HR manager email value, if I head back to my named formula and simply change this, Note as I am making the change, as I am typing this, it is changing the value on the fly. The formula's definition is immutable. This doesn't mean the value for this has to be static. It can also be dynamic in nature. I can create a named formula called last submitted item. And for this, I could use last of my data source, which is my SharePoint list in this case, which is leave request. So this will have the last submitted items value and we can check this out on the fly. That's my named formula dot give me the title. Now let's sign in to this app and on this screen, which is my home screen, I have added a label that shows that value. So now I will go ahead and create a new leave request in my power app. I filled in my details. I'll click submit. This has successfully submitted my request. Now, if I go back to my home screen, you can see how this calculation is done on the fly because it's a named formula. If I had to store that in a collection or a variable, I had to reset it. The value is always up to date. This allows power apps to defer the calculation if required. So depending on whether or not it is being leveraged on the screen, only then the calculation would take place on the back end. So it improves the performance and load time of your app considerably. Error handling. If you go to settings and search for error, you can turn on formula level error management feature. With this feature, if I was to execute any formula that results in an error, it will display the error message. So instead of returning an easy to ignore or misinterpret blank value with error handling turned on, we can now report an error to the end user. Further, if you look at the value of this formula, the data type that it is returning is an error. And we've been given some new PowerFX functions that we can leverage to even handle these errors. For example, if error, my formula, display the message, divide by zero. I can also leverage the error function to throw a different error. This expects property called the kind of error. I will pick missing required. And the message here is do not divide by zero. The error message that appears is do not divide by zero. Plus we can catch all errors of our power app in a new property for the app object known as on error. For example, notify. Let's make an error in the app. The app object throws that error. If you want to put out even the details of the errors that are being catched, there is a property called first error dot message will contain the error message related to the first error that it has caught. Error in app, please contact administrator. 
invalid operation division by zero. That's the error that it caught. Search and replace in Power Apps. This feature is now generally available, which allows me to search across all the components of my Power App. I'm searching for user email. It has found that user email is a global variable and it is being leveraged on the app on start function in two different places. If I select this, it will directly take me to that specific location in the formula where I am leveraging that specific variable. I can filter my search results to search only based on specific categories. It can search variables, collections, flows, components, screens, and a lot more. We can also replace the text directly across the entire app. User email is my global variable. So I would like to replace this text with GVL user email. I will click on replace all and confirm and it will go ahead and replace user email to GBL user email across all of these occurrences. Parse JSON, which allows us to parse valid JSON in the form of string and convert it into something known as untyped objects, which we can then typecast to the data types that Power Apps understands and traverse through the JSON. For the following JSON code, if I wanted the value of the name property, we will leverage the new PowerFX function, which is parse JSON from textbox controls text property. This will return an untyped object. From here, I need the property name. Name is of type text. So I will typecast this to text and it will give me the value of the name property. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.